Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlotthauer here in the Home Weather Office for Wednesday, October the 18th, 2023. We have some very important news to share with you all as Tropical Storm Tammy has now formed, according to the National Hurricane Center, with winds that are at 40 miles an hour. But the question is, how much stronger will this get on the approach to the Windward and Leeward Islands over the next three to five days? And could this still become a hurricane? Here's a zoomed out view on the true color visible satellite imagery from Dr. Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com. And we can see where the big convective mass actually is. That's why the National Hurricane Center has designated this already a tropical storm. We have winds that are coming in out of the easterly direction on the northern side. We have winds that are doing this on the eastern side of the circulation. However, this is still a little elongated. And when we look at this a lot closer on our meso floater satellite imagery, let's kind of zoom in here. And we can see that we do have those winds doing this. They wrap all the way around and then they kind of get pulled in out of the southwesterly direction on the southern side and they wrap all the way around. But we do know for a fact that the circulation is probably somewhere underneath this deep convection that we're seeing on the satellite imagery. So here's a look at the latest seven day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida. And we can see that they have already designated that disturbance 94L was previously now is Tropical Storm Tammy. This is the first advisory as of 5 o'clock this evening or afternoon with winds that are at 40 miles an hour. Central pressure has already been falling a little bit down to 1,007 millibars and it is located 13.0 degrees north by 51.7 degrees west and it is moving to the west at 23 miles an hour. So this is moving pretty quickly. Here's a forecast track from the National Hurricane Center on Tropical Storm Tammy and we can see that it is headed right towards the leeward and windward islands through the next two to three days. So you don't have much to prepare for this. Therefore, there is already tropical storm watches issued for Barbados, for Guadeloupe, for Martinique, as well as some of the other islands to the south. This is a big deal, folks. This could bring a lot of rainfall, lots of flooding, some surf, as well as some high, uh, maybe some storm surge, that sort of thing. Winds at, again, 40 miles an hour, and it is moving to the west now at 23 miles an hour. So again, this is moving this way really quickly, the question is how far west will this get and therefore the cone of uncertainty still brings this away from the islands that you can see that and then the other side of the cone brings this well into the northeastern caribbean possibly clipping or moving on top of puerto rico in about three to four days the earliest reasonable time of tropical storm force winds is as follows so the higher uh, the brighter the colors meaning the higher the chances are so there's already a 40 to 50 percent chance Hands at Guadalupe could have tropical storm force winds arriving by Friday morning local time. That's your guys' time, not mine. So therefore, if you wake up, you start hearing the wind, it's time to get out of harm's way because this is going to be a very strong system. And then eventually over the U.S. and British Virgin Islands, there's a 30 to 40 percent chance there too of tropical storm force winds. This could even get uh, a little close to Bermuda, as you can see there. They are not far away uh, to the northwest of that 5% uh, declaration that you see here on this map. Now, the key messages for tropical storm Tammy is very important that we read all of these. And then we're going to also look and read the discussion from the National Hurricane Center. There's a lot of information that I do need to provide you all because that is my job. The tropical storm conditions are possible across portions of the Lesser Antilles beginning on Friday. Tropical storm watches are currently in effect for Barbados, for Dominica, for Martinique, and Guadeloupe. And additional watches or warnings will likely be required tonight or on Thursday. Heavy rains from Tammy will begin to affect the northern windward and leeward islands on Friday, spreading into the British and U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico over the weekend. This rainfall may produce isolated flash and urban flooding, along with isolated mudslides in areas of higher terrain. I would also like to read this very detailed Tropical Storm Tammy discussion from the National Hurricane Center as of 5 o'clock Pacific or uh, PM Atlantic Standard Time for Wednesday, October the 18th, 2023. So the tropical disturbance that the National Hurricane Center has been monitoring, folks, 
uh, for many days as it transverses the tropical Atlantic, um, previously named Invest 94L, has now finally became a sufficiently organized both convectively and circulation-wise to be designated as a tropical cyclone. The circulation still appears a bit elongated in visible satellite images, but the conservative activity suggests that a well-defined center has formed. Earlier, scanner monitor data showed winds of at least 35 knots to the northeast of the center, and Tefab provided a Dovrik estimate of about 35 knots. Therefore, advisories are now being initiated on Tropical Storm Tammy with an initial intensity of 35 knots, or about 40 miles an hour. The initial motion is westward or about uh, due west directly 275 degrees as fast as 20 knots for about 23 miles an hour. But there is uncertainty in the estimate given the center has likely just recently reformed or formed deeper under the, the mass of convection. A strong mid-level ridge to the north is forecast to keep Tammy on a westward motion but slower over the next 24 hours or so. After that, a deep layer trough moving across the eastern United States is expected to push the ridge eastward, allowing Tammy to turn toward the northwest and then north into the weekend. The track models agree on this general scenario with Tammy moving over or near the Leeward Islands Friday into Saturday. However, there are some notable differences with some of the stronger models, the h Wharf and GFS showing a turn just before Tammy reaches the islands, while the weaker models have the halves group, that is BNA, and HMON move the storm further west into the northeastern Caribbean Sea. The initial NHC track forecast is between these two periphery scenarios and is close to the Euro TVCA and the HCCA solutions. After passing the Leeward Islands, Tammy is expected to accelerate northeastward over the central Atlantic ahead of the trough. Now, this is the intensity forecast, and everyone, I know there's a lot of reading here. I'm not going to do this in every video, but just for the first advisory mainly, I want to cover a lot of this. Global model fields in the Statistical Hurricane Intensity Prediction System, SHIPS, that's what this means, uh, an acronym, a model diagnostics suggests that Tammy may deal with some vertical wind shear of at least maybe 15 to 20 knots. It's not shown here, but I think that's what's going to happen, and possibly some dry air in the vicinity over the next few days. On the other hand, the storm will be moving over very warm waters of at least 29 to 30 Celsius, which is really warm. That's mid to upper 80s. Therefore, gradual strengthening is forecast during the next couple of days with the NHC intensity prediction very close to the IVCN and HCC aids. While the forecast depictates a 55 knot tropical storm moving across the islands, there could be some adjustments to this forecast once Tammy's current intensity and structure become more clearer, which means this might get stronger than what is being indicated here. So you all on these islands need to be prepared for a possible hurricane. I'm not joking around at all. This could be more of that unexpected type of system that we may be dealing with. But then, therefore, the intensity, uh, the system is likely to uh, intensify thereafter. Now, because the hurricane models are having to re-render and or rerun through the forecast, we will not provide those in today's update, and we could only solely re, uh, kind of rely off of our global models, unfortunately. So I can just bet on me that this could become a hurricane with winds that could reach 75 miles an hour within the next five-day period. So looking at the latest Euro, this is for Thursday morning, and so there are some timing differences between these two models. This is for October the 19th, and we can see what our structure looks like. Very strong easterly winds, well noted here on the Euro. Very weak southerly or westerly winds on the uh, southern side of the system. So this is more elongated. You can almost see that right in here as this tries to move towards or actually moves more towards this way. So over the next, let's go out to day, in the next 48 hours, this gets really close. Here is Dominica down here. Oh, wait, no. Here is Guadeloupe, Martinique, and Dominica. Maybe this is Dominica. This is Martinique. I know. My, I, there are so many islands to, re, uh, to name off of. 
but I know over here is Barbados. You know your islands. You kind of know where you're located, and you can see here strong winds on these islands coming in out of the uh, southwesterly direction. As this continues to move off towards the northwest, 60 hours out, we could have a strengthening system here on the Euro with winds up to 51 miles an hour, but those wind gusts there could reach near hurricane force. That is near 74 miles an hour on the Euro. But yeah, and also the Euro actually makes landfall on what island is that? I think that is one of the Virgin Islands. Very intense system here the center moves right on top looking at the gfs model let's look at this run and as we play this through we can see a much stronger system uh particularly maybe a hurricane here with winds 75 to 85 miles an hour and it tries to maintain that intensity with winds between 75 to 80 miles an hour. But you can see here, it does miss the islands entirely. We get northerly flow, and then winds wrap all the way around from the southwesterly direction on the back side of the system. So therefore, this misses the islands. But there are models that I'm about to show you here in just a split second that do show that there could be a landfall at, as a hurricane. And this is what I'm talking about on Tropical Storm Tammy on our spaghetti model plot system. You can see these are different what-if scenarios. What if it's stronger? What if it's a little further west? What if it's a little further east? What if the ridge to the north is a little stronger or weaker? There's a lot of what-if scenarios that take uh, place here. And so that's why we are seeing this spaghetti plot. And that's why we use this in a lot of my videos. Because it really helps to clear out the confusion a little bit. However, please do not... And I repeat many times, folks, my job is to really emphasize with what Dr. Levi Cowan typed up here and kind of coded this. Please do not use this map to make decisions. Please seek official info because your spaghetti plot is just your model guidance. It is not an actual forecast. We don't know if this is going to hit the islands yet. Maybe Mother Nature knows the whole time. But at us as forecasters, we don't know. So therefore, there's a lot of uncertainty. And this is just a guidance, not a forecast. So the spaghetti plot, of course, a lot of the models are on top of the islands, which usually means the higher the odds are higher for a landfall on some of these islands in the next two to three days. And that's why we see the NHC uh, cone of uncertainty right on top of these islands with tropical storm watches issued. Okay. Some of the other models right down here, those are the outliers. That's the halves A and the halves B, which explicitly show that the system is going to be much further west into the northeastern Caribbean. Why is that, you might ask? Because the system is not going to be quite as strong as what most of the other models indicate. In fact, this is dependent on intensity. The stronger the system gets quicker, it is going to actually gain latitude sooner rather than later versus if it's weaker, longer, and it doesn't intensify very much, it's actually going to move much further west um, and it's not going to make that turn very soon at all. My intensity forecast is right above the latest National Hurricane Centers. They predict winds up to 70 miles an hour in about five days. I'm going a little bit on the higher end of that, but not by very much at all. Right, probably about hurricane intensity. So therefore, my intensity forecast is lowered a little bit. But I do indicate that this is going to become a hurricane in about five days. You can see the black line right there intersecting with Tropical Storm in the green and Category 1 in the yellow. So right there between 70 to 75 miles an hour plus or minus is my forecast. I'm right within line though with the NHC. Maybe a little bit higher and a little bit lower depending on how you look at this. But it is worth noting some of the spaghetti plot up here. Um, does indicate like the W A W or the H W F I, which is the H Wharf and the H Mon consensus does indicate that this could still become a powerful hurricane with winds that could max out at a, over a hundred miles an hour. The C O T I is the only outlier here of a Category Three hurricane, and it is worth noting this could go up pretty significantly. We just don't know the. Uh, how this is going to all evolve since it just formed and we will have to look at pre uh, future model runs of what this actually ends up doing but there is quite the ceiling here between a low end tropical storm 
to a mid-grade category one or two hurricane. With that being said, I have some cool awesome news to share with you all that you guys are actually gonna rely on my hurricane updates a lot more than any other person out there on YouTube. No, I'm not trying to get my ego in the way of me. I'm being straight up honest with you all here. And this data right here that you're looking at, this is from Lead. okay? Remember that one? That became a Category 5. But this is actually tail Doppler radar from Miss Piggy or Kermit, depending on which um, NOAA aircraft P-3 Orion flies into these systems. So what you're looking at here is basically um, wind and precipitation data. So not only are we going to provide wind data, but we're also going to be providing precipitation data. What does the structure look like with um, these systems? So they are going to be flying the tail Doppler radar mission, a P-3 Orion, into TAMI overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. So tomorrow morning's update or late mornings, early afternoon, we will be providing you some of the most concrete, best weather evidence known to man on this YouTube channel. All right, I'm not joking about it either. You don't see these images very much. And so uh, I cannot wait for that data to come in. Hopefully it comes in on time though. It is off of a data point, so it might be delayed. Hopefully not very much, but we will try to uh, bring you that information once it becomes available to me. So again, that's this mission right here, the tail Doppler radar NOAA A3 or Air Force mission into TAMI will begin in about eight hours and nine minutes from now. And we will be providing that. And it again, tail Doppler radar, that's this, what we're looking at here. And they will be flying it from the surface to 10,000 feet. So, oh boy, I just cannot wait to bring you all that very important evidence on what TAMI actually looks like without looking at satellite or microwave data. Now, with that being said, I sure hope this video helped you out a lot on the latest on Tropical Storm Tammy as of 3 p.m. exactly on my computer here, October the 18th, 2023. I sure hope um, you guys subscribe. If you haven't already, hit the like button and share this video with your family and friends on social media. But again, we're really gonna watch Tammy over the next several days as it moves towards the west northwest and the west at about 10 or 20 to 25 miles an hour and anyone living on these islands definitely need to be out of harm's way because there could be quite a bit of impacts such as heavy rainfall mudslides high surf maybe some beach erosion and in some extreme cases we could even see some minor storm surge associated with tam's structure as it transverses the northeastern caribbean into the southwestern atlantic in the next five days